I'll introduce myself again. I'm Yvette Rowe. I'm the co-director of the Mollywater Guga Research Centre. I'm based here at CDU campus in Darwin on Larrakia country. Um, and so I want to welcome everybody who's joined uh, the presentation this afternoon. I want to acknowledge uh, elders past, present and emerging. I want to also acknowledge other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues that are joining us and also acknowledge our non-Indigenous allies that um, who are also on this journey of improving the health outcomes for mothers and babies. Uh, in the sense of some housekeeping, can everyone put their um, computer on mute? This allows you know, to ensure that Trish gets a clear feed uh, with her presentation and feel free to turn your cameras off if regarding um, Wi-Fi strength and things like that. And I know that people are eagerly eating their lunch. As, uh, as you're aware, this is one of the seminars of the Centre for Research Excellence that the Molly Centre was awarded two years ago. Um, it's a birthing on country centre of research excellence. And one of the key activities that we want to do is share the work and resources and information with other communities, other researchers, students and service providers about the amazing innovative uh, work that's happening throughout Australia. Um, and this afternoon, we're really excited to uh, invite Trish um, uh, to present the work that they've done in the Torres Strait and in WIPA. So I'm just going to provide uh, an overview, an introduction to Trish, and she will add in some of the gaps. Trish is a clinical midwife consultant at the WIPA hospital. Uh, the Torres Strait Hospital and Health uh, is, is bringing birthing services to WIPA hospital. For women living in western and upper areas of Cape York, Cape York Peninsula, this signifies a unique opportunity to bring birthing closer to home for these families. Trish is delighted to be part of this new project of enhanced maternity service provision. Prior to taking up her position in WIPA, she was a CMC on Thirst Island, where she is proud to be part of an already established MGP. Um, and assisted in developing and implementing culturally capable resources for partnering with women who decline recommended care, recommended maternity care. So Tish, we're going to hand it over to you. I know that it's a very brief overview and I know that you've already got some colleagues on the um, presentation that know you from Nullumboy. So uh, everybody lock yourself in. We're going to have a really exciting presentation from Tish. Thank you, Yvette. Uh, thanks, everybody. I'm just be patient with me while I share my screen. Everybody see the presenter mode except for my notes? Yes. All good. Great. All good. <laughs> thanks, Tish. All right. I'm just going to move you guys a little bit. So thank you very much for inviting me. I would like to start by an acknowledgement of country. Um, I would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which I work and live and recognize their continuing connection to land, water, and community. And I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. All right, give me two seconds while I do this. Now, are we moving the slides along? Great, thank you. So thank you very much for um, giving me your lunch breaks today and your time. Um, I'm very honoured and privileged to be spending this time with you. When I look, when uh, Yvette sent me the invitation and I looked at the previous speakers, I'm in significant company and feel very humbled and privileged to be here because I'm basically going to chat to you about what I'm doing in WIPA and what we've done in the Torres and Cape Hospital and Health Service um, in Thursday Island. Uh, so thank you for your time. Like um, Yvette said, I'm a clinical midwife consultant. I'm currently working and um, setting up a new midwifery group practice in WIPA. Um, and I'm going to expand on how we're bringing birthing closer to home for women in the Western Cape and give you a little bit of an ethos behind how we're setting up the midwifery group practice based out of WIPA Hospital. So the aim of the Torres and Cape Hospital and Health Service is to offer women evidence, oh, sorry, offer evidence-based women-centered maternity care. We provide a midwifery group practice model of care across three sites in the Torres Cape and Hospital Health Service. And that 
in Cooktown, Thursday Island and Weepa. And I've had the fortune, fortunate experience of working on Thursday Island and Weepa. We have a philosophy of care that focuses on evidence-based woman-centered care. And as we know, this makes a difference in a woman's life, not just in her parenting journey. It also leaves a lasting legacy for the health of the community. But you may be asking yourself about how we do this in practice. Well, um, here's some thoughts that I would like to share with you this afternoon. We create a multidisciplinary working partnerships, partnerships with non-government agencies and with Aboriginal health service providers. By offering women a positive and supportive work environment for our mid by offering a positive and supportive work environment for our midwives, this then is reflected and translated in the care that they provide the women and their families. The presentation I'm going to be doing this afternoon is designed to demonstrate examples of how we do this in our practice. Like I said, we based our philosophy on four principles, a multidisciplinary approach to our care, providing holistic care um, across a physical, social, spiritual and cultural. We empower women by to have a voice in their care journey and provide culturally appropriate care. Sorry, you just have to excuse my dash hounds as well in the background, the joys of working from home. <laughs> um, so go ahead, we provide culturally appropriate care. And if we care for the midwives, that, that they will help care for the women. Okay, so we know that evidence shows a woman who receives care from a known midwife is more likely to have a normal birth of a healthy baby at term, have a more positive experience of labor and birth, and be more satisfied with the care that she received and go on to successfully breastfeed. As a clinical midwife consultant on Thursday Island, I've had the privilege to be involved with developing culturally appropriate resources when we when in developing part in developing resources in partnering with women who declined recommended pathways of care, Thursday Island was one of the um, uh, consulting sites when we when we went to um, develop these resources, and I'll share a little bit more with you about that. Um, I'm now the like I said the clinical midwife in Weepa, playing a role in the multidisciplinary team in establishing the menu the new midwifery group practice based out of Weeper Hospital. How did we turn this philosophy into practice? By creating interdepartmental, multidisciplinary working relationships. This includes regular weekly case conferences to discuss our plan, clinical plans of care. Our multidisciplinary team meetings involve GP obstetricians, midwives, but can include uh, multidisciplinary colleagues like dietitians, diabetic educators, sonographers, social workers, physiotherapists, and health workers. Partnerships with other hospitals and health services include the Midwifery Consultants Navigation Service, which is based out of Cairns Hospital. And this is provided by the Cairns Hospital Hinterland and Health Service. It's a team of senior midwives and Aboriginal and Torres Strait health workers who facilitate the maternity healthcare journey for complex care women and families. And what that does is we as the MD, MGP, so the midwifery group practice in WIPA, we coordinate this care with the midwifery consultation navigation team. And then it, it, it speaks to a continuity of care journey for them as well. So as the women get transferred out because of their complex needs, if they get transferred out and, and, and are not birthing in Weeper, they get transferred out to Cairns. They have already met these um, midwives on a case conference um, setting. So they have a continuity of care once they get into Cairns and the midwifery navigation helps them um, attend appointments, um, you know, um, and, and is a face for them to go to if they need any help in Cairns. So that's the midwifery navigation consultation team, but we also walk, work in partnerships with non-governmental organizations such as Mokai Rosie Bai Bayen. For over 35 years, Mokai Rosie Bai Bayen has provided a healthy, caring environment, environment for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women and children attending medical treatment in Cairns. They have accommodation for up to 24 clients and offer 
a home away from home and a place where women can feel safe and secure while they're spending those special days bonding with their new baby recovering from medical treatment. So we work closely with Mukai Rosie Bai Bayen. They have an in-house transport service that assists in taking the women to their medical appointments, as well as providing weekend shopping and fishing trips. The other partnership that we've developed is with the Punapima Cape York Health Council. It is a membership-based community controlled Aboriginal health organization that delivers culturally appropriate primary health care to 11 Cape York communities. WIPA Midwifery Group Practice works very closely with the Punapima to assist in the maternity service provision, for example, in the Baby One program. Growing strong babies builds strong communities. The Baby One program creates the opportunity to achieve real improvements in the antenatal period and for up to the first 1,000 days of a child's life. Appropriate care is provided um, in the women's homes by local community-based Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers, as well as us in the assisting from the Torres and Cape health, Hospital and Health Service with the MGP that we're developing. All righty. Um, so like I said, an example of where um, the Torres and Cape were partnered in creating um, culturally appropriate resources was um, it became a focal site for some work that I did with the clinical excellence team. Um, the, so the example we've been involved with is making women the center of care in a culturally safe way when they decline recommended um, clinical care. I played a very small part in working with the clinical excellence Queensland team when I was based on Thursday Island and helped develop resources with the help of Lindell, with Lindell Gray the Principal Project Officer, Maternity and Patient Safety and Quality Queensland Health, Beck Jenkinson, a Research Translation um, and Impact Officer with the University of Queensland, and Professor Rebecca Kimball, Founder and Director of Queensland Clinical Guidelines. These culturally appropriate resources came out of a larger consumer-driven action following the Queensland State Maternity Services Forum which created the statewide guidance for partnering with women who decline recommended maternity care. And I'm using these next few slides with their permission. So the aim of the project was to provide support for consumer and clinician partnerships in a situation where a woman wishes to decline the recommended maternity pathway in Queensland public hospital facilities. How this translated to culturally appropriate care was as a result of the trial feedback. The trial resources were subsequently amended and endorsed by the statewide maternity and neonatal clinical network and republished and then adapted to meet the cultural aspects for the cohort of women we provide care for in the TCHHS. These resources are available on Queensland Health Government websites, and they can be found under forms for women and clinicians and include titles such as First Nation Consumer Yarning, Maternity Care, It's Your Decision, and Yarning and Supportive Care Plan, Declining Recommended Maternity Care. Like I said, they're available on the Queensland um, website. So what happened was we, their initial forms were quite lengthy and um, cumbersome to navigate. This created a yarning tool effectively for us to open the discussion with women in a culturally safe way um, and was supported by midwives and health workers and GP obstetricians. And it came down to um, these documents that we can now um, put in a, a care pathway um, when we're planning maternity care. I can share the website um, afterwards with Kayla and she can distribute it to the audience as well. So one of the other aspects that we do um, in, and, and one of my work, my, much of my work that's focused in, in WIPA is um, we translate our philosophy of care for the midwives, to the, sorry, to the midwives. If we look after the midwives, they will care for the women. My work in building the midwifery group practice in WIPA is to offer a positive workplace culture and environment. If the midwives are happy, this translates into good care, which is, as mentioned before, is knock-on effects for the women, their families, and the communities in which they live. 
How do we make the midwives happy, you might ask? We offer a model of care that allows midwives to work across their full scope of practice and welcomes midwives with endorsement. And, and if they don't have endorsement, we'll support midwives to obtain ARPA endorsement as part of their professional development. We offer a union endorsed local service level business agreement, enterprise agreement, with an annualized salary and supportive working conditions that allow a self-managed work-life balance. We offer remote area nurse incentive package that includes professional development allowances. So it means that they can fly out um, to develop uh, for professional development. We offer two flights out of an isolated loca location to the nearest city per annum for midwives and their families. And, and offer accommodation and subsidized utilities. The WEPA midwifery group practice will consist of five clinical midwives and one early career registered midwife, which is an identified position. And I'm delighted to tell you that we have filled that by a very, very lovely midwife who is just thrilled to be able to um, have the opportunity to work in remote, uh, in remote midwifery. We have, as well as this, we have dedicated um, maternity Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers and a dedicated multidisciplinary, dis multidisciplinary team, including a social worker, dietitian and physiotherapist, as well as administration of support. So this multidisciplinary approach is um, the way forward and we recognise this as a um, flagship, if you like, across the TCHHS of practising. Um, as we cannot truly embrace birthing on country international movement that is an overarching aim of returning birthing services to First Nation communities and Aboriginal um, and Torres Strait Islander control yet, watch this space. There are advocates far more qualified than me advocating it. We're aiming to bring country closer to birthing and we will be changing our clinical services capability framework from a level one facility where we are currently not a birthing facility, to a level three facility where we will be, birth, where we will be birthing as of August 2022. This will include capital works as part of on the outside of the hospital where labouring women will have access to a culturally appropriate outdoor area as per their request in the initial phases of the WEPA birthing business plan consultation. It affords Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women access to the earth and embraces the concept of bringing country closer to birthing. This is what our currently, what our indoor facilities look like. Um, and like I said, our proposed capital works will hopefully deliver something that looks like this. Our birthing unit, which will have a homely feel and provide women the opportunity to birth in water. So not only will the gardens provide that uh, link to the earth for our Aboriginal women, but um, we will give the opportunity to our Torres Strait Islander women uh, to birth in water if they so choose. If we can't bring birthing on country to the women, we can bring country closer to the birthing women in the Western Cape. And this is what we aim to do um, in WEPA. Thank you for your time. I probably raced through that and I have spoken far too quickly. So please feel free to ask me any questions that you have. Kayla, do I stop sharing my screen now? Uh, yes, would you like me to? Yes, you yes, can. Yes, yes, perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, event. So, oh, yep. Turn that light on, please. Uh, Tish, thank you very much for that. Um, I think you've raised a number of issues um, from the model of care, from community engagement to the vision that you've presented. So I might um, open it up to the participants uh, for any questions. Um, I know there's what um, uh, Kildy's got a question down here. So I'll open it up for her and then I'll wait for that. So, people, if you've got a question, you can either put your hand up or you could post it in the chat that I could read out for Tish to, to respond to. Kildy? Hi, Tish. Thanks so much. Um, can you hear me? Or should yes. I? Oh, great. Thank you so much for that. That was great. And it's really um, it's tremendous to hear what's happening there. 
What would be also um, great to know is the models of care that you're setting up, it sounds like they're uh, sort of a, a caseload model that include outreach care to the remote communities. So um, I was just wondering if you could explain how that happens and how the caseload is worked out. So for the, um, you know, just the numbers and the transport and the time in remote communities, that would be tremendous. Sure. So um, WIPA is probably going to, with the projected figures that we have, WIPA is probably going to birth anywhere between 100 to 150 uh, low to medium risk uh, women. So according to the ACM categories, that would be a Cat A and possibly some Cat B. Cat C women, so high risk women, would still be transferred out to Cairns Hospital, um, which is our nearest uh, obstetric a hospital referral hospital and Townsville is our nearest neonatal um, referral hospital. So the high risk women would go out to Cairns at around about 36 or so weeks um, and, and then fall under that midwifery consultation navigation service and um, work in partnership with them, Mukai Rosie, Bai Bayan and Apuna Pima out there. Uh, the low risk women are going to be cared for by the midwifery group practice and we're hoping to extend our services across the whole of the Western Cape so that would include the 11 communities in the Western Cape, <clears throat> excuse me, from Mapoon all the way down to sort of Cohen um, and as far sort of east if you like as uh, Kawanyama and Pomparao and Lockhart River. Um, the MGP works very closely um, with Apuna Pima, our Aboriginal health service providers. So we'll be working with them on the ground um, during, during our time in community, um, delivering maternity care services. And so what we look like in terms of MGP is that we'll have six midwives um, and each will be given a geographical area to be that continuity of care named midwife and they'll travel out to community and depending on where it is once, uh, once a month for about three to, three to four days um, in each community and then return and birth, hopefully birth the women in Weeper when they um, choose to come up here. So the uh, women in the community will have a known midwife um, of the of the six, one of those six will be a relief sort of float midwife. I haven't come up with the correct term yet for what her role will be, but effectively they will be a midwife that covers annual leave, um, professional development leave, sick leave, emergent leave, etc. Um, so that we still offer that continuity of care, and the women will have still met uh, not only their named midwife, but that. Um, uh, a relief midwife so that um, they see the same faces over and over again. Does that answer your question, Sue? Sorry. Yep, okay, uh, yeah, it does. Thank you, Tish. So at this stage, you're not looking at having any of the communities having 24-7 midwifery care based in the communities. It's all going to be an outreach model. Um, there will be no midwifery-based 24-7 um, care, but there will be um, a bit like in the Northern Territory where they will be looked after by the community health workers and the remote area nurses. And, and like I said, we'll play that visiting role um, to the community once a week for a, or once, once a month for a week um, and, and be that conduit then for care. And we also provide telehealth services. The women themselves can also phone up. We're 24 hour seven service, so they can phone up and ask questions um, if they have them as well. So they'll have the direct contact with not only their health uh, uh, workers and their uh, remote area nurses, but they'll have our telephone numbers as well. So, um, sorry to be hogging all the questions, but um, so in WEPA, I'm presuming you're not looking at 24-7 midwifery care. You're looking at on-call caseload midwives with backup from... So if women have to be, for some reason, they're going to be an inpatient, they have care um, in and out from their MGP midwives, but care from the, the nurses that are based in the hospital. Is that correct? 
Yes, so midwifery group practice will be a 24-hour, seven, seven days a week um, model there in Weeper Hospital. Um, so if anybody needs any midwifery input, we will absolutely be attending Weeper Hospital. But otherwise, it would be, like I said, in communities, it would be the health workers or remote area nursing with input from ourselves as well. And this is why we need to work in partnership with our non-governmental organisations such as Apuna Pima. Um, but the Weeper Hospital itself will have 24-hour care. So they'll, the women will come in, birth, and we'll provide mid midwifery care there. So, sorry, I'm just un, a little bit unclear. Are you aiming to staff the ward 24-7 with midwives or you're aiming to provide caseload care for midwives backed up by the nursing staff in the hospitals? Or is there going to be... Caseload care. There's going to oh, be no call, no call midwifery. It's caseload care. Yep. And um, just one other question. So uh, one of the things that um, certainly the Rural Maternity Review of Queensland, um, the task force identified, is that when we try and um, we start establishing these kind of services as level three, that it is um, important to consider level two services and what they might look like. So if you set up something that looks like a level two service that can operate as a level three service when you've got the medical staff, but if for some reason something happens with the medical staff, you're not dropping straight down to a level one service, you keep it running as a primary maternity unit, a level two service. Is that in your planning at all? Because I know that that's something that um, we, we don't do very well in Australia. Absolutely. No, that is definitely part of our planning and we are uh, working towards our strategic partnerships um, to make sure that that's aligned with our uh, capability services framework. Um, so, yes, definitely it's part of our planning to make sure that that happens. Uh, Tish, there's just a comment in the chat box. Just that again, there's some, there, there's, uh, um, some non uh, clinicians on that. Can you just clarify the difference between level one and three? three? Um, but also in your description, there's probably a big headache, hurdle, a challenge that you had to overcome. And there's a number of uh, health service designers that are uh, listening today. Um, can you give an example of how you've overcome some of the uh, one significant challenge? But if you can start with the clarifying the levels of hospital. So a, currently our level one hospitals do not birth at the moment. They provide imminent birthing um by uh, remote area nurses. So they were, they're trained in imminent birthing, so emergency birthing facilities. And we're hoping to step that up to a level three facility where we will offer a regular birthing service staffed by the midwifery group practice. So, and that includes a multidisciplinary team of emergency theatre staff, theatre capability, 24 hour seven um, theatre, birthing facilities and if we need to a level three nursing um, uh, nursery facility so we can look after women uh, sorry women and, and their babies more importantly in a, an advanced neonatal life support setting um, whilst we wait for transfer out to our larger tertiary hospitals so that's the sort of basics between a level one stroke level two facility um, one of the biggest challenges, I think, has been to, um, uh, I don't know, is, is to actually engage the community in this. Um, the, the, and, and I guess all the politicians and the executive of the TCHHS, the women themselves, have been asking for this service for a very long period of time. Um, and have wanted the service and actually see the value in it. When the consultation prior to um, setting up on the business plan, 87% um, of them said they want that uh, relationship with their known, with their known midwife um, is, is the most important thing to me. And then it, I think the, the challenge it then has been across the TCHHS is to roll it out um, to uh, sort of across the executive board and, um, uh, you know, to make sure that we're, uh, we're in partnership with our non-governmental organisations, like I said, and just overcoming that bias that 
uh, we need to be staffed, you know, 24 seven, like a traditional maternity unit. In fact, midwifery group practice can function without that. So you're still on mute there. Hi, yep, thanks for that, Tish. I've just got a question here in Darwin. Thank you, Tish. My name's Tez. Uh, I'm the Senior Maternity Advisor for NT Health. So one, a huge congratulations and acknowledgement, not only, I guess, the work you're doing, but those broader pieces of work like the partnering with women in declining care. You guys have been uh, critical in helping us in the Northern Territory grow and follow in the leadership that you guys are exemplifying. So congratulations to you and your team. What I guess I'm really interested to understand and something that we're struggling with in the Northern Territory is trying to work out an appropriate caseload number per midwife, particularly in the context of a holistic model of care where we are encapsulating the woman and making sure she can access all of her needs. Can you tell us what your caseload numbers are and what framework or what process helped you to identify those numbers? Um, so a lot of that framework came from um, previous consultation um, prior to the project commencing just to work out sort of, you know, population index numbers, um, what our population index looked like. Um, the way we have divided it up into WEPA is um, basically through geography. So a named midwife will be responsible for a certain um, number of women in a geographical area, for example, um, Mapoon. Um, and then the, the weeper women, so the women who have weeper dresses, and that includes three suburbs across weeper, will be divided along those caseloads. So we're looking at roughly a caseload of uh, 32 to 36 women per um, midwife, um, because that then helps them establish the care that they need they need to provide in the geographical locations without it actually being a too big a burden for them as well. Um, so the, we looked at all kinds of frameworks and all kinds of models in our business case, um, including you know models such as GP shared care, um, those sorts of models. And we decided that the um, framework, the business case framework, decided that the best way going forward, eco both economically. Um, and giving gold standard level of care was going with the midwifery group practice model of care. Thank you so much, Tish. That is really, really helpful and definitely aligns with many conversations we've had at this end uh, in regards to caseload numbers. Um, we also are looking at that in a geographical context, but I guess the challenge for us is, you know, we have some communities with a population of 120 and some with nearly 3,000. And it's, you know, the it's then balancing how do we work that out across the team. So, yeah, definitely keen to continue to connect with you and hear how your team's going and hopefully we can have some shared lessons together. We, we have similar sort of things, um, Teresa, along those lines as well. Um, and we found that sometimes it is, you know, on our communities with the smaller numbers, it's combining that in a, in a economical geographical way. So, you know, if a community is close by, it turns, you know, it means that we can arrange transport, um, et cetera, to those, those communities. But I'm happy to um, sit and chat to you and tell you how our model is going to evolve. Uh, one of the comments in the chat, you, know, you talked about uh, caring for the midwives so they can care for mothers and one of the things is having a, a pathway and about how do we support students and I know there's some students uh, listening today and the question from Helen was uh, do you think you'll be able to be you'll be in a position to in the future to offer student placement? Absolutely so across the TCHHS already um, Thursday Island offers a student uh, placement and a graduate midwifery uh, model. So um, newly qualified graduate midwives can jump on board to that. Um, would they've also, I've, um, also had the honor of working uh, closely with uh, uh, the director of uh, midwifery, um, Alison Weatherstone, who is currently covering for Gemma Macmillan. Um, and developing the uh, maternity care assistant cadetship out on Thursday Island. So that provides um, 
um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, person the opportunity to um, start in a cadetship and maternity care assistance role. Um, and they must be a student of midwifery, um, that, which allows succession and career planning pathways to that, that cause. Our early career identified position in WIPA also offers a similar sort of um, program to what the graduate mid midwives are currently working on. Oh, I've just got a question from a um, PhD student graduate, also a midwife. I'll get her to introduce herself. Hi, Paige. My name's Rose. It's an amazing um, presentation you've got. Sorry, I feel like I'm leaning into the camera really weirdly. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, it's amazing that you've got an identified position. And I'm wondering, did you have any barriers or did you have any obstacles into um, implementing that? If so, what were they and how did you overcome them? Um, I can honestly say that we probably did have barriers um, in introducing that, but because we have a very strong director of midwifery in Gemma and Alison, um, they got it over the line in terms of executive support. And then I guess the rest is quite frankly, me and my big mouth, just hammering home each opportunity I had that this was an identified position. We need to protect it as such because um, very often you can find yourself having conversations with HR saying, oh, we've, we've had no applicants. Can we just throw it open to everybody? And I just kept coming back down to, no, this is why we're protecting this um, career succession uh, for our, to build a capacity in our Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander workforce. Um, so the barriers I had very little to do with because, like I said, I have very di strong directors of midwifery um, who take the credit for that, not for me. And then it was just me keeping on saying, no, I'm just going to protect it and, ke and keep holding that space. I think that you're also saying, well, actually, it aligns with the vision that we're trying to roll out in the community. So you've, you're sticking with that. Um, Trish, um, I'm just mindful of Tish. Um, Don't worry. Yeah, uh, Leslie in the sense of your experience in this area, both as a, a scholar and a clinician and looking back, um, your comments about uh, Tish and the team and the achievements. Leslie, you're on mute. I was just blown away. It's just fabulous to hear what you're doing. It's sort of like a dream of mine for the last 20 years. And what's so good is that it's happening in different places. I know the work that Sue and her group are doing, but to hear what you're doing and the leadership that's coming out of Northern Queensland is stunning. Absolutely fabulous. Well done. It's just a joy to hear about it. I'd love to be able to take the credit, Leslie, but I stand on shoulders that have come in this space far, you know, long before me. Um, and I just happen to be standing, you know, in the right place at the right time, holding space for these for these people. So um, please don't think it's, it, it, you know, it's uh, it's just about us and TCHHS. We're we're hoping to be a flagship for sure, but we stand on very broad shoulders in this space. Uh, thanks for that. Not denying that because it wouldn't happen without that background, but it's still fantastic work and requires clinical and other leadership to make it happen. So well done and thank you. Uh, thank you. Th thanks for those comments, uh, Leslie. There's a comment in the chat bar. Uh, do navigators provide caseload care 24-7? The um, Cairns Consultant Navigation Team don't provide care, or they provide a limited service of care, um, but they, uh, and, and then they, navigate uh, through the system in Cairns where people can access 24-hour care. So they just help build the navigation through that system and point people in the right direction with the correct contact details um, for uh, care that they need 24 hours, seven. And um, if people want to... Um, Alison's provided some additional comments uh, about the team and the... the um... Uh, the navigator as well. So please check Alison's comments um, in the chat. Now, I'm just mindful, are there any final comments from participants? I can't see any hands up and I can't see any... Hi. Uh, who's that? Serena, but I'm on Amy's screen. Okay. 
Yeah. So um, I just had a quick question. I did come to the Zoom a little bit late, but I was just wondering in terms of like um, holistic patient care and all that um, and considering uh, the importance of midwifery, after the actual birth and stuff like that, what sort of cultural support um, is being offered or is that something that... um, is that something that's in place now or is that something that the program is hoping to, um, like, develop further down the track? Because obviously, like, there's obviously the before, the during birth and the after is just as critical and especially um, given the idea that there will be Aboriginal women who are giving birth in Weeper and all that, but that's not necessarily um, their traditional land. So, um given the limitations of the midwifery and all the um and all that um like what sort of um resources and potentially access to elders and community members and like being welcomed to country and stuff like that um is that something that's sort of being explored or hopefully going to be explored in the future sorry it's a bit of a loaded question but yeah all good um, so, like I said before, we, as a midwifery group practice, will be um, caring for the women up to six weeks postnatally. And if they choose to go back to their communities, we'll make those community visits um, postnatally as well. Um, but then that's definitely where we rely on our partnerships. Um, so, with our Aboriginal Health um, Services partnerships, um, like I said, the Baby One program. Um, um, looks after children in community for up to a thousand days. Uh, post their birth um, and we, we work closely with our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, health uh, workers to um, facilitate that. Um, the other thing that we do is offer that culturally appropriate care with our own Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers that will be joining the team um, so we can offer links and resources to go alongside that in the, uh, as, part, and as part of that Baby One program. Did that answer your question? Yes, yep, that definitely covers it. Thank you. All right. Um, so I think I, don't, I can't see any more questions being tabled there, uh, Tish. So I'm going to give you sort of the, the, the take-home message. I mean, we've got, um, uh, close, I think I saw about 55 participants. So of the 55, what's the sort of top three things that you want them to remember from your presentation? Um, I think probably the, um, you know, if we can't deliver birthing on country in the traditional sense, we can definitely build a philosophy, a philosophy of care that brings uh, country closer to birth or birthing closer to country and country closer to birthing. Um, we can uh, look after the midwives. If we look after the midwives, I'm, I'm a great believer in looking after my team um, just because I'm the clinical midwife consultant. And if I look after my team really well and make sure that they're happy, that absolutely gets translated in the care that they deliver um, and provide to the women and their families. And I guess the, la- the third take-home message is, is just keep up those partnerships, you know, reach out to people, make those daily contacts, build those working relationships, because it will make your life so much easier when you um, come to have, you know, to get um, services across the line politically, as well as, um, you know, across the HHSs that you're you're looking after. Thank you for a informative, inspiring, uplifting presentation that talks about the, the challenges, but also the wins that you could have, like you said, with an amazing team, with collaboration, uh, privileging the women's voices and their aspirations. Um, so from everyone uh, or in the audience, can we give Tisha a round of applause for her presentation today? <laughs> Thank you kindly. Um, and Is there... Right. Sorry, Yvette. Yeah, no, you go. If there are any further questions, please um, uh, get, reach out and contact us. I will actually leave my email address and contact details with Kyla, and she can then um, distribute that across the team. Um, but I'd also really like to give a big shout out to the, my director of midwifery, Alison Witherstone, who's been a great support in um, helping me um, establish the WIPA MGP. Um, and I will give her contact details of when. So if you if you were thinking of a more strategic level than my brain is capable of, please reach out to her because she's far better eloquent. Uh, she's better eloquent than I am at doing that. Uh, Alison, you had your hand up. 
Uh, Alison, over to you. Indeed. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to really thank Tish for her presentation today. <clears throat> excuse me, and um, just reach out to everyone if you do have questions. Um, Taurus and Kate have um, such a great um, model of care. We have MGP in all three of our birthing facilities. The opportunity we have with Weeper Birthing is as we head into phase three and in terms of long-term sustainability, we are really going to look at feedback from our consumers, our elders, our local um, consultation committee and look at how we can actually do it better. I think we have a huge opportunity to look at how we can support our First Nations midwife workforce and support our women, acknowledging that a lot of our women that will be coming to uh, Weeper, it's not their home country and land. And so we are always in a state of improvement. And I think we just need to have these conversations regularly. Really, really would like to get into the student pathways, even from high school, because I think we need to be supporting um, our, our our local um, workforce. And so if anyone has um, wants to reach out to Tish or myself, please do. We will leave our contact details and I'm um, happy to look at our ways we can improve our access to care for all of our women, especially in Torres and Cape, given that they're, they're such huge geographical areas and there's amazing work being done across Australia that I think we can lead the way with. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Tish. Uh, so thank you, Tish and Alison. In the sense of sort of uh, wrapping it up, logistically, um, we will probably uh, on the last PowerPoint put um, Tish and Alison's contact details. So when the presentation gets available on our website, you'll be able to uh, contact them directly. Um, Tish, again, you know, the invitation was extended because we were really impressed with what's happening out there. So we encourage your your leadership and your team to keep going. Great guns. So um that's uh, from our perspective. Again, uh, if there's anything, uh, you've got the invitation and you've got Kay um, Kayla's email address. So if you've got any questions about the presentation, feel free to contact Kayla from our team, Tish or Alison. Um, but from the Molly Centre, we appreciate your attendance for this um, afternoon and we'll be sending out a flyer uh, probably in the next three weeks about our next exciting presentation. So again, Tish and Alison, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.